Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be having a look at three different ways to reverse a string using JavaScript. Now, we can see here I have three separate files, one, two and three, and they all contain the same starting code. It's going to be up to us to, of course, implement this reverse string method or function um, with each of those individual implementations. So uh, we can see currently this function is going to simply return the string that you pass in, in its non on reversed form. So if I was to run this script here, 01, we can see we get hello decode as the output, which of course is the string that I'm passing through. So now let's implement this reverse string to of course reverse the string. So this first technique here is going to utilize array methods because we can easily convert the string to an array and then call methods on that data just like you would with an array then simply convert it back to a string so we're going to utilize the split method here so let's say return string and then call the split method on the string object now this usually as many of you may know allows you to pass in a token for example a comma and then it is going to return an array of every single uh, part of that string that is separated by a comma okay now in this case here we actually want to pass in an empty string and this means that we're going to get an array for every Every single character within the string. If I was to keep the code like this and I run the script again, we get here an array of every single character within the string, including the spaces. Okay, so we have this array right here. Conveniently, arrays come with a built in reverse method, so I can call reverse just like that. If I save this now, we get the array in its uh, reversed form. You got the exclamation mark at the top here. Then the last character is the capital H. However, we of course need this to be a string. So what do we do? We simply convert it back to a string. Let's say dot join and similar to the split, this instead is going to join on a token. Um, this is typically used similar to split where you pass in a comma or a space in the case of like CSVs, things like that. But in this case, going to pass through empty string to join them back together with nothing separating every single character. I'll run this script again and we get the, uh, the reverse string right there. So this is probably the simplest technique when it comes to reversing your string in JavaScript. Moving on to this next one here, we're going to be utilizing a for loop, okay? So we can see, of course, we have the exact same uh, starting code. Now, going inside this function, we're actually going to create a new variable, which is going to represent the reversed string. So let's say reversed equal to, then make it an empty string. So we're going to build this string uh, throughout this function execution, and we're going to be starting with an empty string. So now we have the reversed uh, variable, let's return that variable right at the end. But of course, in between these two statements, we need to now uh, run a for loop against every single character in the string that was provided in the argument. So we can say here for, then say const c of string. So this just means here for every single character of that string then we are going to run this bit of code. Now, the reason why this works and the reason why it looks similar to what you might see in an array is that strings are iterable just like arrays. This means you can use for of because for of doesn't care if it's an array or what it is, as long as it's iterable. I've got a video on that also if you're interested. As long as it's iterable, it's going to work. So we're looping over every single character inside that string. Now we're going to update the reversed variable to be equal to character plus whatever is currently in the reversed variable. So this is kind of like a backwards append, right? So now if I was to run this code, we actually get the result we want. We get the reversed string. Let me just touch on this very shortly on you know how this is actually working here. So we can see that for the first iteration of the loop, we, in this case here, we get capital H, right? So capital H goes inside here and it says reverse equals capital H plus an empty string, okay? The next one comes around lowercase e. Reversed is currently a uppercase H only, right? So const C, this case here, a lowercase e. So 
for this lowercase e here, we're saying reversed is equal to lowercase e plus the h. So in this point here, we actually have e and then h. And we can see how it's continually um, you know, being built as the loop executes and we simply prepend every character as we go on, giving us the reversed string. So this right here is your second technique for reversing a string. Now you can also uh, use a for loop, a traditional for loop using the i, and then you can say i plus plus, i less than, or in this case here, i minus minus, because you wanna start at the last index of the string and then make your way down to the bottom. And you don't need to do this reverse append, but it's the same sort of idea here. I'm just using for of instead of the standard for loop with the i or iterable um, you know, variable there. And this last technique is gonna be quite similar to the previous one, but we're gonna be using the more appropriate method which was sort of designed for this, uh, for, uh, for this scenario. So having a look here, um, once again, the same starting code. So hopping down into this function here, we're actually gonna have a single statement for this one. So we're gonna first convert the string into an array just like we did in the first scenario. Now you can, of course, uh, use the split uh, method like we did in this first one here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it a little bit different here. I'm gonna be using array.from instead. It's gonna give us the exact same result. So array.from allows you to pass in an iterable object, in this case here, of course, a string. So I'll pass in the string and just just like we saw in the first one, it's going to create an array of characters um, for the string. So now we have the array, right? We're now gonna say dot reduce. So the reduce method was built to take an array of items and then reduce it down to a single result. In this case here, we wanna take the array of characters and reduce it down to a single reversed array, okay? Actually, in this case here, my mistake, a reversed string. So take the array, convert it into a reverse string. This is perfect for the reduce method. So the reduce method here is gonna take in a function, which of course is going to run for every single item on or within the characters here. It's gonna take through firstly, um, the reversed string and then a C representing the character. I'm gonna be showing you how this works very shortly, but within this now, we're going to then have C plus reversed, just like we did for the previous example. So I guess this one here has elements of both, right? Now, the starting uh, initial value for the reduce is gonna be an empty string. So we can see how this has similar characteristics to the number two in that you've got the starting string, an empty string here, empty, right? Then you got the C plus reverse and you got similar sort of variables. So what's going on here? Well, the reduce method is going to begin by defining an empty string as its initial value. It is then going to run this function right here for every single item inside your array. In this case here, the array is of course of the characters within the string. So H E L L O comma space and so on. So this argument here, this reversed parameter, this is going to contain what the previous value was. So in the first iteration, this function is gonna run and reversed is gonna be the empty string. Then C is gonna be capital H. Then it's saying whatever C plus uh, reversed is, that's gonna be what the reversed is for the next iteration. So in this case here we have H, so it says H plus empty string, just like this, right? H plus empty string. Then the next iteration of the function call here, okay, the next time it runs, it's gonna use E instead. So it's gonna have E here, so E as the C, then the last result of the last function is gonna now be what's in the first argument here. So it's gonna be H, just like that, right? And this goes on for the remainder of the call of reduce. I've also got a video dedicated on reduce if you're interested to learn more about that one, but I hope that makes sense. We just take the array, convert it down to a single reversed string. And that is your third way of, uh, you know, reversing a string in JavaScript. I'll just guarantee this actually works here. So if I do node, then I do o3.js, we do in fact get the reverse string. So that's all working perfectly fine. Now, when it comes to which one you should use for your application, well, I'm no expert on time complexities and things like that. However, from what I can tell, 
all of these techniques have similar, if not the same time complexity, because they all need to loop over the reverse string at least once. Now, maybe there's specifics as to how the built-in methods handle and make things more efficient and take shortcuts and so on. Potentially, I might be wrong there, but from what I can tell, especially when dealing with small strings, it really won't be too much trouble for you to just simply use the uh, the simplest solution, which of course is the first one here. You split the string, you reverse it, then you join. I mean, the reverse method is built into JavaScript, so um, you know it's definitely convenient. And I think this is how I would do it if I was doing it for a real application. So that is how three ways to reverse a string using JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.